Welcome, everyone. Hey there. Um, second, uh, is it the second? I think it's the third keynote of the day. Um, yeah, thanks, first of all. My name is Thorsten Behrens. Um, I'm here uh, for Allotropia. We're uh, honored to be able to sponsor the conference. First of all, I'd like to say thank you, in particular, uh, to the local team here, um, setting this up in just a wonderful way. Um, such a... Like so? In such a wonderful way. Um, and um, yeah, in, in a brilliant like, uh, building with wonderful, uh, with wonderful technology and everything was great the last uh, uh, four days actually for me. Um, but also thank you to all, uh, to everybody else who uh, helped making this a success. Um, all the people from TDF staff, all the volunteers that helped with uh, preparing things in the background. Everybody here coming here to the conference, of course, and uh, um, presenting your talk and your work uh, that you did um, over the last year. So yeah, I feel honored to be here and uh, welcome everyone. So a few words about uh, Allotropia. The uh, company was uh, founded with less than three years ago. Um, we're operational since uh, uh, January 2021. Uh, we were spun out um, from another company that I've been working for um, five years. And I, we took essentially the, uh, the entire LibreOffice open source team and spun out uh, our own company. We're a remote first company uh, and pure play open source uh, with quite a variety of customers uh, all over the uh, map, uh, private and public sector. Um, right, our team, most proud of it, most wonderful team. Um, we're covering essentially, if you, if you look down this very long list there, we're covering the entire scope, not only of the code base, but also associated uh, uh, and, uh, and parallel projects there. Um, pretty much the entire open source office productivity space, text processing, PDF, uh, what have you not. So we're a one-stop company and we want to be for all things LibreOffice. Um, and with our flagship initiative, uh, the WebAssembly port, um, something with the, uh, with the guiding mission of the company uh, to make open source shine in every shape and form. So running natively in the browser, that was something that was not there before um, on the client side. Um, right, so we're also active um, uh, in other organizations, uh, for example, the Open Source Business Alliance, um, we do networking there, policy, a little bit of uh, lobbying work um, in Germany mostly. TDF, by the way, is a member there too, so, so there's quite some alignment there. And we're trying to um, make sure that everybody knows um, relative to other lobbying organizations, relative to other um, um, like BSA or, or other places that um, um, politics is informed about the, the, uh, the advantages of open source and the, the, the very wide uh, diversity there um, in, the, um, in the business landscape. Oasis, of course, very important for, for LibreOffice because of the uh, open document format. And um, one of my team members, Michael, um, is there serving on the uh, ODFTC. I've been serving there for many years, um, but, but now uh, he's there. He's also co-editor um, of the uh, ODF standard, and we're happy to, to fund that work. And finally, of course, uh, last but not least, TDF, where we are in the advisory board, and um, I'm on the board, and my colleague Gabor is on the board, and my colleague Balash is on the membership committee. So yeah, we're trying to support LibreOffice and the project and TDF in very many ways with a lot of time and a lot of energy, which I hope uh, is showing. Um, yes, so what you see here, actually, that's the team, uh, 10 people by now. So we've been growing um, since last year. What you see is essentially probably something like 75 plus years of experience. Um, in tech and in the market, and um, in particular um, um, regarding the LibreOffice technology, the code base. Um, in total, we will have um, eight talks uh, over, or eight talks, seven talks, and one, one panel um, over the conference. Um, just a quick 
quick walk through there so that you know where to go. Um, there's some um, SDK adventure story from, from the woods, uh, from me. Um, so a bit of a showcase what you can actually do uh, with LibreOffice when you combine that with uh, uh, other technology in interesting ways. Um, and it really helped there um, to have a very deep knowledge of the, um, of the core, um, but also of the, the um, like extension development and what you can do on the, on the SDK uh, and API side. And so I think that's a, it's a nice, um, nice showcase of what is possible, even if you don't want to do core development and um, yeah, how we can do that. Second talk is uh, from Sarper. Um, yeah, that's um, another update on the WebAssembly story. Um, if you want to run LibreOffice in a browser um, and you're curious what's happening there, come to that talk. Um, there's some, some good stuff going on. If you want to run it in a browser and as a programmer, you also maybe not only want to run it there, you want to uh, talk to it, automate it, build some um, build your own software around LibreOffice and then interact like on the JavaScript side with LibreOffice. And uh, surprisingly, or not, uh, that is possible uh, with Yuno. Um, so you essentially have, it's not quite done yet, it's not like absolutely production ready, um, but we're there like um, 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 quite a large percentage so that you can use almost all of Yuno um, client side in the browser. Um, third one is uh, my colleague Michael Stahl about the work uh, in around um, document accessibility. That's one larger area of work that have, we have been conducting over the past year, mostly. So, so that's the, um, the uh, accessibility of the software itself, um, where um, great strides uh, were made, like great progress was made um, uh, since we uh, TDF hired Michael Wickhorn there, but also before with lots of tender work. The other side of accessibility is, of course, what comes out of LibreOffice, the documents itself, the PDFs, um, that also needs to be accessible in this day and age. And there were some, uh, some gaps there and a bit of a feature gap and, and some, some, some bugs and stuff lacking. So that's one part of the PDF export story there that we, um, that we greatly improved. Uh, thanks to customer funding, and Michael will talk about that. Um, Armin, um, yes, so um, thanks to funding from Collabora, uh, we were able to finally uh, get us nice gradients, very important for interoperability because the uh, other uh, programs there, they had um, more than just uh, one or two colors in the gradient, and that kind of looks a bit uh, insufficient then when you import that and you get a nice rainbow colored gradient reduced to just two colors. So that works now. It's um, shipping with LibreOffice 7.6 and quite some detail work there to do. Regina um, is uh, busy uh, standardizing stuff and um, uh, there, there's some other corners where probably some work is necessary, but like by and large UI, for example, interacting with it, but by and large, um, it's working. If you're curious, come to see Armin there on Friday. Um, yeah, this one, uh, that's the extension formerly known as Volmux, and um, it's now uh, hosted at the uh, Document Foundation, and it's called LibreOffice Template System, and I will uh, tell some stories there, what we did, um, what it is, what you can do with it, and um, what's the plans, of course. Um, next one is uh, Balash. Um, again, coming back to the document accessibility um, and um, a bit unrelated, but we put it in one talk. Uh, so um, it's essentially a story uh, of what Balash did um, in, in the last half a year or almost a year. And that's those two areas, um, improving calc and the um, accessibility story, the document accessibility story in writer in particular. Um, and there's some more work there planned in particular for Calc, so, so then suddenly those two things actually uh, come together. Um, Samuel unfortunately can't be here, so that's going to be a remote talk that is recorded, um, but we will be in the room, so if you have questions uh, we can channel them. 
um, that is the uh, accessibility sidebar, which is super great. Um, so that's, that matches something and surpasses what uh, a competing office suite has there. Um, and it's uh, building on top of uh, previous work from Collabora and others with this accessibility checker. You might have seen that when you exported a document um, to PDF with a, a PDF UA enabled and you got some list of warnings there. So this is now a very nice way to actually get this, this warnings in an asynchronous way and go through that and fix them. Go watch that talk, it's, it's a really cool feature. And finishing off uh, with, um, I, think, I think there's some rescheduling. I haven't checked um, uh, the, the schedule, but I think we're moving that to Friday, end of the day. Um, that's a panel with Heiko and uh, other mentors from the GSOC uh, this year, and at least one student. And um, yeah, we're gonna present the, the work there and um, what happened in the, in the GSOC this term. Okay, then moving on, um, that's, that was the conference. Then a little bit of a sneak peek into uh, the next year. So a bit of a roadmap, um, what, um, what we're planning to do from the Allotropia side. Very important um, also to me uh, is the uh, LibreOffice WebAssembly uh, work. So we, we plan to invest more there. Um, get it ready as a product so that you can actually use that in uh, uh, as a web widget um, in, your, in your web application and productize um, the, uh, the UNO API binding so that you can use LibreOffice in a browser from JavaScript as if it would be Python, as if you would be hacking a Python extension or a Java extension on a desktop. Um, Calc and Impress. Um, We'll get some uh, more document accessibility improvements. There's also quite some bug fixing probably still necessary. Now that 7.6 is out and we're getting feedback uh, fr from the users. Um, and then there's a very interesting thing that we will be very busy with uh, in the next months. So we, we um, obtained funding to the, the broad um, frame there is to improve the security story around LibreOffice. And there's many pieces there that we can do. And one important piece is obviously getting people to update the software on a timely basis. And there was this, um, uh, this prototype um, for the MAR-based updaters that Mogi did many years ago. And um, there were plans to um, roll that out and productize that. And I can today say that we um, uh, secured funding for that, so we would be most happy to implement that for the project, contribute it all back, also help with the infrastructure there to set it up. Um, I personally think that's extremely important um, since we know how reluctant people are because it's kind of cumbersome and it's not really like as streamlined as it could be for the updates. Um, second there, that's a bit of a very technical, very geeky thing, but the ODF format is substantially worse when you want to encrypt it. So the, the way the ODF encryption works today makes it largely unusable for large documents or for documents with many, many images. Uh, so we also secured funding to improve that, to be at least on par uh, with, uh, with Microsoft there. Um, and also improve many other things like getting the encryption and the, uh, the key derivation, etc. getting that up to uh, 2024 standards. And um, another bit, there's quite some smaller issues there, but securing LibreOffice defaults. Um, there's always a bit of a tension. So if, if, there, if you have a default, uh, should, it be, um, should it be secured? And it's mostly annoying to users. Or should it be uh, relaxed and users are not annoyed by questions or by lockdown features, but then like on a worldwide scale, of course, it makes the entire software slightly less secure um, if the defaults are. So that's going to be an open discussion. Um, again, funding is there, but it's a discussion that we need to have with all of you, in particular with the user experience side of the project, what works, what is acceptable and what is not. And but at least like from, from, the, um, from the core side, from the code side, from the functionality, provide 
options there to lock LibreOffice down a little bit more than it is today, so that in any case, regardless of the defaults, then an enterprise can really lock it down. Okay, um, then, yeah, that was, that, was the, that was the advertising and the, uh, the company and Allotropia story. Um, if you would allow me some, some personal thoughts. Um, I'm, I'm standing here in front of you, not just as a um, managing director and, uh, and majority owner of, of a company, but also as a director of the board. And um, so I do have some, some personal thoughts on some things. And given that I have the stage now, I thought I could share a few with you. Um, yeah, TDF turns 11 uh, next February, the, the foundation. And LibreOffice turns 13 uh, next week. So it's uh, becoming a teenager. It's quite, um, quite a long time. I've been um, on the board for almost 12 years. So in February next year, it's going to be 12 years. Um, so that's a long time. And um, what, have we, what have we done? I mean, what, looking back, clearly um, we started we started with that, uh, with that rocket ship. And um, um, by all measures, by all means, we were extremely successful. If you look at the foundation today, we got, I think, 1.5 million annual donations on average. We got 15 staff. We had an extremely well-known brand. We are the FLOSS FOSS office suite, the open source office suite. There's, I mean, there's a few smaller contenders, but like if it's a, it's a synonym uh, for, for, for the office suite there. We're a role model for others who come, want to join the foundation, want to join the project, want to benefit from the, from the name recognition, from the brand, uh, or want to learn from us. So um, people from, from the foundation, people from the project are now um, helping other projects, mentoring other projects, um, counseling other projects. So, so by all means, um, it's, it's a great success story. And um, we have established us in the wider open source world. And not only that, we have become part uh, of critical infrastructure. The fact that the German uh, federal uh, uh, IT security uh, uh, institute or agency is now funding improvements in LibreOffice I think is testament to that, that we have become um, that important. And we are recognized as part of the digital sovereignty substrate. So, so people realize that an office suite is part, is an important part, for example, of a government, government desktop. So, so there are initiatives that want to use uh, LibreOffice in that context, and they realize that also needs funding. So both of that, like not only that they recognize it's great to have open source there, but also that open source needs funding. That's our success. Not our, not just us, but clearly we, we, we had a role there uh, to push that narrative. And yes, we're used in governments and we're all fu partially funded by governments all over the world. And um, in particular in Europe. So I think we are there, we have established ourselves now what? And that is, I think, part of the, of the issues that we're seeing uh, in, the, in the recent years that we're kind of plateauing. So we have uh, we've been incredibly successful and we, we achieved things beyond our uh, wildest dreams, really. At least I would not have expected that the project would be that successful with so many people and have this sort of maturity and this organizational level. Still, the question is, what's next? And that has been asked since, since a few years with the uh, next decade manifesto from 2010, uh, turning 10, and then 11, and then 12. So um, my personal take on that is um, we need to look beyond LibreOffice. When TDF was funded, well, it's not that we should ignore LibreOffice. It's not that we can do five million great things with LibreOffice. But TDF was funded with the idea in mind that it's an umbrella organization, that we should have more 
than just this single trick pony that is LibreOffice or the Office Suite or the desktop. So fanning out, doing more, trying things, I think that's the, my opinion, that's the order of the day. And there's lots of green shoots everywhere. If you look what's happening with LibreOffice, the core, like LibreOffice technology, where it is used, how it is used, who is using that, there's lots of great things happening. If you look carefully, all of that are small little plants, small green shoots all over the place. You need to listen a bit and you need to pay attention, but you do notice that. But there's more than that. We got more than 150 Git repositories at TDF hosted. Um, there's some duplication, there's some forks of other projects, there's some infrastructure stuff there, but there's real projects out there that are not LibreOffice. There's uh, Document Liberation Project, there's the LibreOffice Template System, there's the ODF Toolkit, there's CPP Unit, there's Python goodness, there's more than a thousand extensions in the extension repository. So um, I think there's great potential and the more we increase the, the, uh, the diversity and, and the more we are attractive for other projects, the higher the chances that one of those, or two or three or ten, will grow into a next big thing, next big thing here or there or there. Um, so I don't know if you've seen. I mean, and, and with with the idea that that desktop, of course, is is, uh, is aging, is a bit of a legacy. But then you see, um, I don't know if you've you've seen this this LaTeX. There's a number of designated LaTeX successors, for example, types but others. So rethinking, reimagining uh, document production. I think that's something where TDF is extremely well placed to host those projects if they're open source. So in terms of goals, like what, what we can do beyond encouraging others to join us, uh, what, what, active, what actively can we do? I don't know how many of you know those uh, six uh, strategic goals that are on the slide there. Who, who, who see them? Okay, there's like a handful of people <laughs> who've seen them before. So, well, that's actually the foundation goals since, since last year. So, so maybe we should um, end it. First and foremost, uh, uh, includes me, um, promote them a little bit more. Um, so who worked, for, who from this, this, the people in the room worked on, on one of them at least in, in the last year? Yeah, that's almost the same number. <laughs> so, so at least those that knew, of, knew about them did work on them, which is great, thank you. Um, right, so, um, yeah, so maybe it would help then um, if we would be more inclusive there, if we would um, listen. Maybe, maybe those goals are not the right ones. Maybe you have other goals. Maybe the only goal is having fun or the, your goal is um, something else entirely. And TDF should be there and, and the foundation and the project should be there to help you with your ideas if you're a volunteer. So, so Encouraging people to innovate, encouraging people to realize their dreams and their ideas, I think that's where the TDF can shine. And um, of course, everyone from us turning this around, the question is what I can do to further the mission. Uh, and you need to tell us if you need help with that. And I think TDF would be most happy uh, to help then and uh, jump in. So what I'm, am I here for, if you ask me that? Um, so, so I'm, my, my primary motivation is that I just love the project and I love working with all of you and I, I love furthering the project and I, would, I love helping it to stay relevant uh, for at least another 13 years. Um, I would just love to see the contributor base growing as it did in the, in the years past. Um, there's some, I think, some need to professionalize the organization uh, more. We're growing, so, so there's this, uh, in, in the early days, um, everything was, uh, well, as others said, a bunch of friends uh, doing, uh, doing things on a shoestring. And I think we're, we've grown enough and uh, we've matured enough 
but I think there's quite some work to professionalize. But the most important thing, I'd like to continue um, having fun. So uh, should that be the case that the fun is not there anymore, let's all work together uh, to get the fun back. And with that, I'd like to uh, wish you all a most wonderful, enjoyable LibreOffice conference. Thanks again, everyone, for coming here, spending your time with us. Uh, thanks a million to the organizers. Thanks for TDF uh, for uh, organizing, for paying a lot of bills, um, for helping in the background, as always. Thanks so much. <laughs>